Thanks for the call, Debbie. We appreciate it. We're going to talk to Brian now. He's in Sacramento listening to KZAP. Brian, meet Roger. Hi, Roger. How are you tonight? Fine, thank you. Oh, great. I just want to know, uh, you know, the wall was such a elaborate setup, and why do you do things like this? And uh, <laughs> what was your inspiration? Uh, um, uh, why do I do it? Or why did I do that? And why am I doing this one? I just, I, th I think that in uh, kind of sports arenas, and large halls like that. If I go to a concert, I like to have something a bit more to look at than just, you know, four or five guys playing guitars and singing and a few lights flashing on and off. And also, I'm intrigued by the theatrical possibilities of uh, rock and roll arenas, or I have been over the years. And starting with the very early kind of light shows that we used to do back in the late 60s, I've just kind of progressed, sort of working out different things to do visually to enhance the show because of some of the grandiose effects that pink floyd has used over the years that uh, that you're famous for some of the the new waivers got on your case about that did that phase you at all did you were you affected by that criticism no good for you i mean you know it, it's you know if somebody comes out and says that uh, rock and roll should only be uh, four guys on the stage you know with a light bulb and or that it should only <laughs> or it should only be done in small clubs or it, it's obviously ludicrous it's a very broad field now it's a very it's a very young form still it's only been going for 30 years but it's very broad there's room for all kinds of shows and all kinds of styles and types of music uh, within it and all kinds of venues we're well. playing all kinds of styles and types of music tonight we're going to play a song by John and Yoko now that features Andy Newmark and uh, this is from Double Fantasy. Why did you choose to play this? To feature Andy, basically? Well, I, I love John Lennon passionately. Um, but yeah, but I, I, this track came up um, another radio show I was doing. They said, well, you know, who's in the band? And uh, I remember this track. Watch, it's Watching the Wheels. Watching the Wheels. And it's got that new Mark groove. Let's listen to it now on Rockline. What a band. Let's take another call here for Roger Waters, my guest for the full 90 minutes tonight on Rockline from Carteret, New Jersey. It's Pete. He's listening to New York City's 1027 WNEW-FM. Hey, Pete. Hello. Hello. Hi. Roger, how you doing? All right. All right. What I'd like to ask you is, in the pros and cons of hitchhiking, you mentioned uh, Yoko Ono once or twice where uh, Yoko, was it all in vain? Did you understand the music? And I remember reading, remember reading, in Rolling Stone, after the pros and cons had come out, one of the reporters or uh, reviewers said that you took an unfair pot shot at Yoko and that it was uncalled for. And I was wondering if you could elaborate on that a little bit. You know, um, do you agree with him? Uh, I, I would say that you don't agree. You can do whatever you want in your music. But... Um, where were you coming from with the Yoko statements? Well, I don't know who it was. I don't know who that journalist was, but I mean, he's entitled to his feelings, and I'm entitled to mine. I don't really want to go into it in great detail. I'm I'm not a great fan of the ladies. I think we'll just leave it at that. Okay, we'll just move on then. Thanks, Pete. Uh, Kensington, Alberta is where we're headed to. As a matter of fact, K97, our brand new affiliate in Edmonton, is what Earl is listening to. Earl, you're on the rock line. Yeah. My name is Earl Brenz, one half of Hollywood Brenzwood. First off, I'd like to say your music has brought me great happiness and has brought me to tears. I'd like to thank you and bless you for both. Thank you. You're welcome. My question is two parts, sir. What do you feel the effect of video is on rock and roll? And do you have any plans in the near future for a complete concept video? Um... I think that, uh, in general, the effect of video on rock music is to lower the standards, generally, across the board. Um, uh, and yes, I do have plans to make a concert video. I'm, tr I'm trying to do that on, on, on this tour, in fact. And it may well happen. And if it doesn't happen on this tour, I think it, I, I will I'll set the thing up again and do it later in the summer. Because I, I don't want... Uh, I don't want the pros and cons um, live show to just uh, dribble away into the past without being down on tape somewhere so that at least I can show it to my grandchildren and say, that was me. <laughs> We're going to play a song that was recorded live on this recent tour by Roger Waters. And this one is called uh, With Every Stranger's Eyes on Rockline, or Every Stranger's Eyes on Rockline on the Global Satellite Network. I'm 
Hi, Cobra Nationwide, it's Rockline. I'm Bob Coburn with Roger Waters. And we take another phone call from California this time around. West Covina is what Bill is listening to. Uh, what he's listening to, that's where he is, and he's listening to 95.5 KLOS <laughs> station I work for. Hi, Bill, how are you? Oh, just fine. How you doing, Roger? Okay, thank you. Hi. Uh, we all know from your music that you're very political. And I know you live in England, and you don't see as much as we do. But how do you feel about American politics for the rest of the world? And do you think that we should use more strong-arm tactics toward the radical countries, or should we just leave them alone? I think you should leave them alone. I think your foreign policy is a joke, frankly. What do you think the foreign policy of the U.S. is based on, if you could just sum it up? Old cowboy movies. Old cowboy movies. Yeah. Oh, that sums it up, Roger. <laughs> do you have anything else you want to say to what Bill said, or did, is that... Well, no, you know, I'm, 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 you know, I'm being light-hearted about it. I don't feel very light-hearted about it. I feel very threatened by it. Um, and some days I think to myself, well, hang on, maybe I'm being paranoid about this. You know, maybe this is the way to conduct foreign affairs. This kind of stand up and I'm tougher than you and uh, attitude. Um, but on other days I think, no, this is all wrong. This isn't the way that it should be done. And we may never know. That's the problem. I mean, right, it's not written in stone anywhere that says this is the way to go or this right. is what to do. You yeah. know, the Industrial Revolution was only a couple of hundred years ago. Nobody knows. Nobody knows what's going to happen. But it seems to me that the way it's being done at the moment um, puts us in more risk than a number of other ways that it might be done. And it has something to do, though... It's a very, it's a very, very, very complex issue, and it's all bound up with the way that elections take place and the power of the media and the power of television, particularly, which is a thing that I have a bee in my bonnet about at the moment. And so it's, so it's something that's very hard to go into over the air. Um, suffice it to say, I'm very concerned about it all. But Thanks. definitely stay out of other people's countries. Excellent. Thanks for the call, Bill. Thanks for setting us up with that. We appreciate it. We have a call from Highland, Illinois. It's somebody listening to The Loop, FM 98 in Chicago, where you can enjoy your rock and roll nights with a friend of mine, Patty Hayes. Patty, how are you tonight? This is Mara. Mara, you're on the air. Hi, Roger. Hi. Hi. I was wondering, what was the purpose behind the secret message in the wall? No purpose. Just no a purpose? joke. Yeah. Just a bit of fun. One afternoon in the South France. Oh, because they made a big deal out of it. Yeah. Well, you get that. Sometimes. <laughs> now, I think this is fun. You were telling me a story off mic a moment ago that the, the address, when you turn that message around or listen to it backwards or whatever, is an address that's similar to Rupert Hines' studio. Would you tell that on the air? So that yeah, it's similar. He has a studio called The Farmyard, which is somewhere near a town called Chalfont St. Giles, I think, or Chalfont, somewhere in Berkshire. And so he gets sackfuls of mail. So that's where the the mail from the secret message goes to Rupert uh, Hines' yeah. studio. Some of it comes to me, and some of it goes there, and some of it there is a lot of it there. That's incredible. Thanks, Mar. I appreciate it. We're going to talk to Dave. He's in Llano, Texas, listening to San Antonio's Kiss. Hi. 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 First of all, let me tell you, this is a great experience talking to you, Roger. Thank you. And I'll be seeing you in Austin uh, a week from tomorrow night. Good man. And my question is sort of a two-part question. It's uh, what do you want? Uh, the people to listen to your new album, The Pros and Cons, um, you know, what do you want them to get out of it since it doesn't get a lot of airplay? And do you think that uh, a lot of the sales of the album are attributed to uh, the Pink Floyd fans? <laughs> what sales? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody bought it. <laughs> Where have you been? <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Just kicked over the table in my excitement. Um... Sorry, what was the other question? Go ahead, Dave. Uh, oh, what do I want people to go? Well, whatever, you know. I can't... It, that's one of those unanswerable questions. You know, you, you get what you can out of it. Um, it's, uh, it's a strange piece. I know it's not... It's, you know, it's not a very easy piece to listen to. Um, it's, it's not what I would call a, a dance record or a good time fun kind of record or a party record, and that may have hurt you. There, there's, it doesn't have that backbeat on it. That well, you know, record sales aren't everything. That's true. You know, if you, if you do a piece of work and at the end of the day you listen to it and you think, well, that's a good piece of work, that, you know, that's something. should be enough, really. you got a very good point there. I think they call that art, Roger, <laughs> in some circles at least. We're going to play a song now that goes back to... Uh, 
the biggest selling album in the history of music. There's no other way to put it. It's from the dark side of the moon, and this is called Money on Rockline. Rockline on the Global Satellite Network. I'm Bob Coburn with Roger Waters, my guest for the full 90 minutes tonight. And let's go back to the telephones, getting some good calls this evening. Let's continue, Roger. We have a call for you now from Denton, Texas. It's John on the line. He's listening to the zoo in Dallas. John, you're on the air. Hi, Roger. Uh, NTSU wants to know that, um, well, back in the uh, early 70s, you worked uh, with Robert Wyatt, or you did a concert for Robert Wyatt when you were at Pink Floyd uh, Benefit Concert. And um, well, I was wondering if you ever planned to work with Robert Wyatt, Robert Wyatt or Mike Ratledge again. I don't think it's very likely. I, in fact, I haven't seen Robert for a long time. Nick Mason produced um, Robert's album Rocky Bottom a number of years ago. And he's much closer to Robert than I ever was. So I'm, he's not really a great friend of mine. So it's unlikely I'll work with him. Now, what happened with Robert? He fell out of a window? Is that what happened? He fell out of a window and broke oh, his back, my. yeah. Oh, my. Thanks for the call, John. We appreciate it. And we wish Robert the best. We have a call from Flint, Michigan. Now it's Joe. He's listening to FM 105 WWCK. Joe, you're on with Roger Waters. Hi, Roger. What's up? Hi. I have a few questions on the photography of your album. First, why are the pyramids in Egypt used on a poster and stickers in your most popular album, Dark Side of the Moon? And second, where did the idea for the photography on the Wish You Were Here album and jacket come from? God, those... You're talking about 12 years ago, and, uh... <laughs> I can't answer those questions. Who did those? Was that Hypnosis? Yeah. That, that did those? They have done some great album covers over the years. Let's talk about something a little more current right now, and that is a song that we're going to play now by Tina Turner. It's the title track of Private Dancer, and Mel Collins is on this song. He's in your band, too. Why did you choose to play this song? Why do you want to play this tonight, Roger? Well, because um, pe people have been asking me, you know, about, about Mel, because they... He's a name that some people know, but a lot of other people don't know. And this just happens to be one of the current records that uh, he plays some solo work, solo on, because he does an awful lot of um, studio work in London. He is one of the great rock saxophonists and has worked with King Crimson, Dire Straits, Stray Cats, Camel, and a whole lot of other bands. And this is Tina Turner with Private Dancer. It's another song from the pros and cons of hitchhiking by Roger Waters, our guest for the full 90 minutes tonight on Rockline. Roger, when did you write this album, The Pros and Cons of Hitchhiking? Has that been uh, kicking around for a couple of years now? Yeah, I wrote the bones of the piece the um, same time I was writing The Wall. Same time as you wrote The Wall, I'll yeah. be turned. Uh, has that given you time to work on a next project? What can we look forward to from Roger Waters? Yeah, I've, I've, I've been working on some, uh, some new material recently, in fact. When, when I started putting the band together for this tour, I started um, going into the studio and making some demos. Uh, I have demos of quite a few new tunes. Oh, great. So I expect to be making an album probably this year. Fantastic. That's always good news. How much of the tour is left? Are you going to be out on the road for a little bit longer now? Yeah, we go um, we go up to Oakland on Wednesday, and then we're back here on Thursday. And then we go across the country. Phoenix, Houston, Austin, Atlanta, and we finish in Florida, Miami, and then Lakeland. A little bit more extensive than uh, the tour that you did with the Floyd for the Wall, which was only New York and Los Angeles. Uh, that's right, yeah. Well, it was impossible to truck that show anywhere. <laughs> you got a point there. Uh, you can reach us by writing as well as listening to Rockline. Our address is P.O. Box S, Tarzana, California, 91356. I want to say thanks to everybody for the great calls tonight. And our thanks to Roger Waters, not only for the music, but for being here tonight. We really appreciate it, Roger. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. I'm B.C., and I'll be seeing you in a week.